Ladies and gentlemen, we are live on Retail Dunestan. And for those of you who are like, why are you late? Well, timekeeping is retarded. And it's also racist. Well, so I heard. Hello, Ramon. Yeah, a colonial. Colonial. Being on time is colonial because, you know, the whites created the, the oh, timepiece or racist. something like that. Sorry. Hello, One second. There we go. Yeah, check. Even Ramon's retarded. I mean, he's sitting there watching himself, I think. I have to Ramon, do it for the comments. I have to do it for the comments. Porn is haram, and we don't do that yet. Mm. Talking of haram. Right. Speaking about the elephant in the room, why do you look like mm. Jesus across the southern border? Yeah, because that's the way you get into the US. So true story, right? So I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were telling me, this is actually a UK client. I was talking to a UK client. They, they're going to do some business in the, in the US, right? So the guy's actually talking about this business visa he gets. And he says to me, you know, I've got to do this, and I've got to do this plan, and I've got to show the government this. I says, so I looked at him and I said, mate, you're doing your whole things wrong. He goes, what do you mean? I said, what you got to do is fly to Mexico, walk over the border, and you're in. He yeah. was like, that's not funny. I was like, I thought it was funny. No, well, look, the elephant in the room is a poncho, which is a cultural appropriation of the Mexicans. Damn right. Damn right. Well, All right. at the end of the day, Cultural appropriations all around the world now, isn't it? Like, jeez. That's what made the white cultural appropriation. Chinese invented gunpowder and did nothing with it. We took it and shot natives. <laughs> and conquered the world. So we, we shot each around. other first, White-on-white violence was prevalent for like a thousand years before we went to colonize other people. So, you know, we equal opportunity shooters. You know, Ramon, that actually reminds me of saying, you ever heard of the 40-year war? In Europe, there was a hundred year war. I don't know about there, was, war. there was a 40 year war right after the Protestant Reformation where they literally said that the rivers in France had so much blood in it that the river actually ran red. Many people looked at it and were like, it's the size of the end of the time, right? So every time Juju comes out and goes, Hey, the white people are all they're all united in the racism, it's like, dude. Do you ever checked anything about European history? Because, like, they're nothing united about Europe, man. Like, we've been at war no. a few times with each other, right? Like, I mean, you know, have you I heard mean, of World War One and World War Two and many, many right other now. skirmishes? Like, there's one right now. And he's taking the side of the Russians because they're white or something. I don't know. Who cares about Jews? Well, what are the Ukrainians? German? <laughs> oh, no, they're white too. Here's the thing about Julius Malema. Why are people so scared of that guy? Right? So there's a story about the constitutional court has no has no judges because there's, there's like a vacant seat in the con court and the JSC, the whatever you call them, uh, are, are, I don't know, where they appoint judges. Like Julius Malema is there. And he just mm. says everyone's racist, everyone's this Uncle Tom. So therefore no judges can happen, you know, or you know, be placed on the constitutional court. The con court hasn't made a single judgment all year. It's really April. Like, I know African time is a thing. We're guilty of it. But come on. Why is everyone so scared of Jesus Malema on the JAC? Just tell him, just do your job properly, for God's sake. Yeah, so this is obviously the news. that The JAC is meant to have a load of judges, and they don't. Because a lot of them are retiring. They go, <laughs> fuck this job. We don't want to do this bloody this crowd. And, yeah, then they're supposed to get new ones come in. But the problem is that... Julius, and I, is, is it um, Mpofe now? Was it his slope? I don't know, one of them. Shlope, I think it's Shlope's on the on the bench. I don't no, know. No, Shlope, some... was just, Shlope was just taken out. What are you talking about? It's on though. The there's judge. two, there's two EFF judge. stooges on it, isn't there? One of them's like a former judge. Or have they now got the public prosecutor on it? I, I forget, man. Like The EFF's like a revolving door. They all, yes. Anyway. I was about to say something big anyway, so so the, the, they're all sitting there on the JSC, and they basically their entire job is just to basically be clowns of the interview process, aren't they? They call yes. everybody who is white racist because reasons, and everybody who's black who sounds like they have a brain cell, then they're Uncle Toms and they're actually coconuts and they don't believe in you know the black brother, black child, you're on your own, and some some other bullshit. You, you know the usual crap, and then. They throw their names around and the media goes, oh, can you believe they said that? And unfortunately, the minute they recommend anybody, because it's been a shit show of a, an interview, everybody goes, well, that interview is tainted. You can't really actually take that 
that nomination seriously, can you? And then Cyril gets it on his desk and goes, oh, shit, I don't know what to do with this. So I'll deal with it tomorrow. The tomorrow pile on Cyril's desk must be like this, man. It's like, <laughs> must be huge. He's, he's, he's getting to it one day. Just he's still going to find his pen to sign the NHIV. <laughs> he's still going to find his pen. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, it's, but your question is why? Why do, why do they allow this? And well, there's a number of reasons for it, isn't there, Ramon? Number one is that they're scared of Julius and that Julius is just going to turn around and go, you racist. The other reason is that because everybody, I suppose, gets a little bit intimidated by Julius's brown shirts and they don't want to have Julius come to their house and burn the house down because that's kind of what he does. Yeah, I just, I just feel like we, we're being held hostage by like a moron. He's like a, a massive grift and who just doesn't, you know, he, he, he's like the, the epitome of the intolerant minority. Mm. And he does it really well. And everyone's just, just too scared to get rid of him. For some reason, so now there's no concord judges. So whatever criminal court case is happening with the EFF, he's not going to go anywhere because there's no judges to hear it. Like he's got the state by the balls, and I don't think he is that great enough to have the state by the but, balls. He's not Donald Trump. He's not Bukele. He's not Lee Kuan Yew. He's just a grifter. Just a That's exactly what he's he's aiming to do, though, isn't he? He's aiming mm. to make sure that he can never be held accountable for any of the bullshit that he does because. You know, we, we actually, let us not forget that one of the reasons that he pushed aside David Ottohrupa is that um, he once did a, gave a judgment that wasn't entirely favorable to the EFF. And so that's, that's it. So what does that say to anybody now? Well, if you get an EFF case, make sure you, well, don't rule on it and don't give an unfavorable judgment of any variety because it will basically sink your your career aspirations through the through the judicial system. So I suppose the actual really the real question here, Amon, is why do we have politicians on the selection board? That's a that's a far better question. Yeah, um, oh, who knows? It's the way the the cookie crumbles in this particular regard. But yeah, I don't see why we have to be scared of Jesus Palema. He's like a lackey for the illegal cigarette smuggling syndicates. So what? Just another gangster. I'll, I'm I'm much more scared of Gaten McKenzie. Like, I think Gaten can get you whacked. <laughs> If need be. Julius? Maybe not. Speaking of Gaten, he was at um, the business conference of sorts, and I saw the entire thing that he said. He said the biggest battle in politics is between him and the EFF. He says they're going to be kingmakers. He wants to be kingmaker, not the, not Julius Malema, because Julius Malema is communist, terrible, racist, and will kill South Africa, whereas he won't. He'll get things done. So mm. what do you make of that? Yeah, so obviously we all saw the the interview. Um, I say we all, you and I did. No one else did because no one else gives a shit about business news. Anyway, the interview that he had there was actually very illuminating because number one, it had his uh, boyfriend on it, uh, Hislop. We you know we can see Herself here. So Herself actually has a massive um, man crush on Gaten, like massive man crush. I think if Gaten said to him, "You can be my boyfriend," he'd be like. <laughs> he'd cry and he'd be like my dreams came true but i'm also very perplexed as to why herself was even at this because i heard that herself retired from his political career even though he never actually had a political career uh his political career was all in his head and online by saying things that he thought people paid attention to but nobody did but yeah the most important part about the entire interview was that According to Gaten, he really hates, and I use the word very, very strictly, hates Gaten. Gaten really hates Julius Malima. Like it's like hatred is not even a strong enough word for it. So that kind of raises the relevant question of how the PA would ever work with the EFF. And they do. Like currently they do in Joburg and they do in Erkuleni and they do in, okay, I don't know if they're in Neisner. Um, and it's just, it's not, it's not strange, right? As, as we, when we spoke to Charles Lee as the, the former, well, the, the co-founder of the PA, like they do this thing very well, where in politics, it's not a debate. It's, it's friends versus enemies. Friends you support, enemies you destroy. For them, the DA is an enemy based on uh, previous encounters with the DA. The DA just doesn't trust them at all. And it seems like vice versa. 
So the PA wants to govern at all costs. They want power at all costs. They'll go into bed with the pigs to have that particular power. But there comes a time for the PA, and perhaps in Nisner, perhaps somewhere else, where you have to say, listen, we are enabling all this bullshit to happen, right? Mm. We are enabling the, the mayor of Joburg to have 10 security guards. Why? No one even knows who the guy is, right? Do you know what the mayor of Joburg looks like? He's like a nyalpi addict <laughs> that you find on the side of the road. <laughs> You know, <laughs> what, uh, you, I'm so glad you, you said that because the, the no, mayor of Joburg, we we no. make fun of and call him uh, an ISIS mayor. Well, but yeah, but I actually think that that's a really bad example because I'm not sure ISIS would allow this guy in. <laughs> like to be be honest, Hamas has got standards, man, and like this guy don't meet it. Yeah, I mean, so he's got 10 new bodyguards now. Before he had two, now he's got 10. So you know, Joburg now has money to pay for bodyguards for everyone. I'm like, Gaten, like, you, this is you as well, right? This is, like, you enable this sort of stuff. And is there is there some way where you step back and think, you know, it's better to not be in power than to have the people endure this for much longer? I don't know. It's something the PA has to focus on, I suppose. Um, but look at that guy. I mean, come on, the guy doesn't know a thing. <laughs> look at his face, he's scared of everything. You probably can't watch a movie with the lights off because he's scared. And this guy's 10 bodyguards, like, no one knows who he is. How can you assassinate someone who you don't know? It's like, the, it's like the president of Switzerland. I actually met the president of Switzerland by mistake once when I was there. I was in a hotel restaurant, and the president of Switzerland was next to me with a driver. And the guy's like, Oh, that's the president of Switzerland. It's like, Oh, he's like. How? He doesn't have anything. He's got no power whatsoever. He just goes to the UN every now and again. Okay. This is like this guy. No one knows who he is, but he has 10 security guards. Look at him. Look He's at just him. been asked a question. Like, yeah. why is there no water in Joburg? Uh, I don't know. I'm waiting for Allah to tell me. <laughs> Allah, please tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the water? <laughs> I'll tell you after Friday prayers. I mean, come on. This guy doesn't need 10 bodyguards. But anyway, Gaten. And the PA allow this to happen in Nizna, in Johannesburg, in Erkuleni, where they're stealing, they're stealing the bloody dustbins from the offices. That's how much theft is going on there. So as a political party, you have to say, at what stage do we like exit? Because this makes us look bad. I think the PA has lost a lot of credibility with like libs and minorities because they go into bed with these sort of things and allow these sort of things to happen. I don't know. Just a weird dynamic. Yeah, I think I think it's a bit weird because obviously the whole idea behind any of these political parties is that we're going it alone because the ANC and the EFF don't offer an alternative to South Africa. And then you say, okay, cool. So what's your what's your vision? They're like, we can work with the ANC and the EFF. And you're like, yeah, yeah. This, this sounds like a fantastic strategy. And the more the or the longer that they stay in power and their votes are there and continue to allow people to retain positions of authority the harder it is to untangle the poor track records with the people who basically pitch you there in the first place and that's that's the difficulty it's like you can say well we did it for a good reason it's like okay cool but what's the result of that and it's like the result is a collapsed municipality where there's no water like everybody's stealing the place dry and the place has just gone to shit well that's because of you yeah. that's your decision it's very difficult to say well you know and it, it, it's something that we talk about privately right i mean it's like it's all good and fine for people to say oh well sorry we made a mistake yeah it's great to say that when you don't live there but if you're one of the people that live there and as a result of the decision that you made i'm having to then live with the consequences of it i'm less inclined just to go yeah like yeah you know mistakes happen we all we all do the wrong thing hey eh? It's like it's all good and fine for you to say that when you don't live there and you're just campaigning there and it doesn't it doesn't have a direct impact on you. But in many of these areas it does. And that's that's really where the reputational damage is coming in. So we'll see how the PA does. I, I think I think they're not gonna do as well as they hope. But you know, we could be wrong. We could be wrong. Speaking of, of uh the election coming up, the new stats, by the way, Byron, I sent them to you. I don't know if you got them there. New stats, not stats, the the polling data. You can share them. You're welcome to Only share them. released yesterday. Let me just grab them. Very, very interesting. And basically in line with what we were saying, to be honest, 
ANZ down to 38%. Ouch. 38% is blixum. That's like proper bad. Proper, proper yeah, bad. I mean, more interesting though for me is that we called the EFF at what, like eight to nine percent, maybe yep. maybe less than that, and it's like it's still showing them between ten and eleven percent, which is still well surprising to be honest. I mean, I'm I'm still struggling to see how the EFF EFF even gets that level of support because all the by election results show no one votes for these clowns. Like no. they, you remember they were going to unseat everybody in all these minnow little municipalities all around the country and they went around shouting their mouths off and blah 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 and then yeah, with the we'll actual vote remember even some of them they sent floor chavambu there we will remove the ip from newcastle meanwhile ip wins the landslide in newcastle six months later and then it's like we're going to kill everybody and we're going to be the biggest party in the country and then they get like five votes like, mm. yeah so I'm still curious as to who exactly is going to vote for these clowns. Because remember, when it gets through to the national election, it's all going to be about numbers. Now, you know, it's it's important to recognize that the numbers in a national election are very different to numbers that are in, say, a local governmental election. People vote differently locally to nationally. Yeah. But locally, they, they just don't seem to have the support that they seem to suggest they do. No, they don't. And, and we often say on this channel, KZN. Always look at KZN because KZN determines a lot of the national vote. Look at that. MK on a low or high turnout, which is 60 or 66%. MK is at a solid 26, 27%. Killing everyone else. Killing the ANC. Even the DA is higher in KZN than the ANC. It's just an amazing collapse of the ANC vote. KZN was the strongest province for the ANC and the Jacob Zuma. Because why? He's a Zulu chief. He did good. They killed the IFP and and now they they being destroyed by Jacob Zuma. So if you look, you take the MK, you take the DA, you take Bosa, which is very weird. I don't think Bosa would be anywhere close to like seven. No, and I still I'm still are. I must say that I'm looking at this entire Vicious. Thing and I said to you yesterday, I'm skeptical of the the results just purely because of Bosa. Bosa usually yeah. appear nowhere, and that's actually yeah. a very sizable amount. It's it's a bit strange to go from like zero to eight percent in like three months. But assuming this is correct, I have an idea. IFP plus DA plus MK plus Bosa. Like you, don't, you don't actually need Bosa to be honest, but mm. you could do DA. IFP and Bosa, you could scrape by with 50% if you really wanted to. Do. Excluding MK. But I think excluding MK is a huge issue because they're just going to burn that place to the fucking ground. I they will. don't see the DA working with MK, though. That's that's the other side of it. That's their problem, though. That's dumb. That's stupid politics. They should be working with MK. They should really be having tea. Helen Zilla with Jacob Zuma having tea. They should be doing it right now. Maybe it is. Yeah, and I think that she could even put a thing forward going, you know, I, I also said that even when he got incarcerated, you know, I still thought he was a nice guy and I could I could work with the guy. But yeah. let's go back to what this new where this news comes from. So ANC takes a massive hit in the latest election polls. This is showing that ANC were on 50, 57.5%, but according to the latest statistics, the party could be down to as little as 38%. Uh, key data was also that the DA was up to 25% in terms of votes. EFF remained between 10 and 11%, so that's no growth. And the IFP were at 5%, with Freedom Front Plus and Action SA both at 2%. You may be asking why some of the other parties don't feature on this, and that's because these polls have a 2% error of margin, which means that if a, another party gets, say, 2% of their polling data, they just exclude them on the basis that there could be an error. So it's very possible that, say, the PA gets one5 five percent of the vote but because it's within 2.2 percent error of margin the data isn't included yeah. in terms of the poll and for those of you who are wondering well where the freak does this poll come from uh france Cunier. this is france Cunier social research foundation that's uh, the data that they collected and they tend to be pretty pretty accurate uh, the social research foundation i rate them more highly than most others 
And then just today, the the what you call it, the Financial Times came out with a poll that looks remarkably similar to the one we just saw, but apparently it's their own poll. Which, but so, so you know, the FF here is slightly higher, MK is slightly the same, ANC is sort of the same. So this is a Financial Times poll, which basically mirrors the poll that we saw yesterday from the Social Research Foundation. So what does this mean, Byron? 38, 25, 13, 11. And then the rest doesn't really, don't really matter. If you think about it, think about it this way. If you took the ANC at 45% six months ago, you minus the 13% MK is taking, and then it mirrors exactly what the ANC is getting, the high 30s. MK has eaten 8 to 9% of the ANC's vote, which is massive over such a short amount of time. Listen, there's still seven weeks to the elections. A lot of things could change. Yeah. And the concern is, people are saying now, I don't want to know your thoughts about this, MK is the Trojan horse of the ANC. They're losing Zulu votes. So they said, you know what you should do? Deploy his Jacob Zuma, act like he's our enemy, and deploy him to KZN to take the Zulu votes away from the IFP so we can regain KZN after the election. Do you think that's correct? Yeah. Look, I think that there's there's a big difficulty with the ANC and what's going on. And I think that it's starting to show in terms of even the way that people are viewing certain things. So I'm actually going to give you an example. So let's use this article as an example. So Chris Harney hated corruption and so does the ANC, says Blade, who's full of corruption scandals. And you see, this actually highlights what the issue is. Like if everybody has heard the whole good cop, bad, bad cop type scenario. We heard it right throughout Jacob Zuma's tenure into Sora Ramaphosa's tenure, right? Remember, we, the Republic was in a bad state because Jacob Zuma stole everything. So it would come in on an anti-corruption kind of agenda and he'd fix everything. Yeah, that's what everybody heard. New Dawn happened. Everybody felt like, yeah, maybe there's something to this. And then ANC got themselves 57.5% of the vote. Yesterday, I think on Tuesday, we covered a, a, an article in that retold understand where Paul Mashatila basically said, trust me, bro, we'll sort load shedding out by the end of the year. We know you don't believe us. And that line was actually really important, right? We know you don't believe us. And that's because people don't believe the rhetoric anymore. And you see, the biggest rhetoric you have to remind yourself of is Jacob Zuma was the true crook. He stole everything. Cyril will fix it. Mm -hmm. But as everybody notices, because they have two R's, corruption has got worse under Cyril Ramaphosa. The state has collapsed faster under Cyril Ramaphosa. We have okay. more load shedding than we ever did before. And so what that means is that a lot of people are looking at what the Jacob Zuma and going, actually, you know what? Jacob Zuma wasn't as bad as we thought he was because it now appears that he was nothing more than a scapegoat to the real corruptors. And the longer Jacob sits there in politics, it gives that credence to Jacob the martyr, not Jacob the thief. And let's face it, Ramon, as the prince once said to us when we spoke to him, so for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, this is the Prince Adil, who is the prince or the heir to the throne of the petty people. And as he rightly said to us, and I quote, the black majority love a good martyr. They love a martyr story. And what you're doing here, you originally painted Jacob Zuma as a heel, right? He was a bad guy because he was the corrupt. He was corrupt and accused number one. Now he's a martyr, mate. The black majority love a martyr. And unfortunately, the ANC have created this martyr themselves. They've created this martyr in the eyes and the hearts of the people. People don't believe anything the ANC has to say anymore because they've all heard it all before. And Jacob just come in there to say, here I am, guys. I'm not the bad guy that they all made me out to be. And it takes the yeah. vote. So, 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 do you, so you don't think it's been orchestrated for like a few years now? No. So, so on Twitter, I'm very active. I'm like, listen, guys, ANC, Moonshot Pact are coming together, government of national unity due to these reasons. They want to keep MK out. They want to keep the EFF out because they know that the rand will tank and investment will fall and we'll be more retail dunny stand than ever before. 
If you will come back to me, like, oh, no, you, you should don't know anything. This, if it was created specifically to capture no. the young radical vote, mm-hmm. MK was created to create the, um, you know, to capture the Zulu vote in KZN, and then after the election, they're going to come together. I just don't see that happening. I just don't no, see that happening. I don't, I don't think any of that. I don't think any of that's correct. Because I think in, any of those individuals are all trying to look at it as if there's, you know, some kind of big master master stroke or strategy. I hate to say yeah. it more, but they, they isn't. You know, it, it's the, there's the old the old saying: "Don't ascribe to malice what you can ascribe to stupidity." And in this in this instance, it's like this is actually just a game of stupidity. And if I were to say to you, what's the common denominator in all this? I would actually say it's Cyril. Mm-hmm. Because remember, Cyril had a hard time, yes, expel Julia. Then Cyril had a hard time with Jacob Zuma. So he removed him from power so that he could take the, the prime seat there. And let's face it, arguably the reason that Cyril went for that position at that time was because he knew it was now or never. If you had given Jacob another an opportunity to like complete a term and kind of really cement in the in the eyes of the Republic what the ANC was, his chances of ever becoming president, so, you know, undisputed president, you know, without a coalition, would probably go to slip, right? Because we were entering in the era of coalition politics. So Cyril made certain moves to alienate Jacob Zuma and his supporters. So. I think what he really expected to do is that he would come in the room, shake up the ANC, expel Julius, and he'd go off into the night. He'd move Jacob to one side, and he'd shut up and retire, and he could be like undisputed de facto dictator, as if he's some kind of Xi Jinping. And he forgets that this isn't China. It's South Africa. And so what these guys did is they went off and created their own parties to basically go, screw you, ANC. Like, you know, you you can push us aside, but we won't be forgotten. And that's all there is, mate. I'd like to say that there was a a plan, but in my view, I don't know if you think differently, in my view, it's all just personalities. It's cults of personalities. personalities. Well, it's all just uh, retail money stuff. I mean, Cyril can't make a plan for anything. He hasn't made any any decisive actions ever. Uh, he has shielded himself by, you know, putting the intelligence services in the presidency. He got his way with, uh, you know, the chief justice, with SARS, Edward Kieswetter protected him from Palapala, the Pali protector, the new one protected him from Palapala. So he's defended himself. He's protected himself. But in terms of a long-term strategy for this election, there is none. There is none. And there's never been. What has Cyril done strategically that is smart? I can't think of a single bloody thing. I can't think of a single thing. They screwed themselves with the economy through COVID lockdowns. But the, the, the only human being could say, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Can get I actually, I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you then. I'm going to say, I don't agree with you on that. I don't think they did screw themselves through the COVID lockdowns. Yeah, okay, COVID lockdowns did contribute. No, make no mistake. But COVID lockdowns impacted a number of countries right around the world, and some of them did bounce back. We have not bounced back. And a lot of it is actually because, as we, you will rightly know, Delami Zumo, as an example, and remember that turd that's now dead that hopefully is in the fourth circle of hell, which is the former Secretary General, you know, the, the turd I'm talking about. And she said very clearly, could we not use the whole COVID lockdown to re-engineer the economy and basically call a proletariat revolt against the republic? Like These people wanted the lockdowns to accelerate the degradation of the country because they all thought it would usher in the communist utopia in their head. But the problem is that in many other countries, right after COVID, they loosened some restrictions and they really kind of pushed forms of should we say, uh, economic regrowth. We haven't done that, mate. Like, in fact, quite the reverse. COVID lockdown's finished. And what was the first thing Cyril said? Uh, NHR, and let's do some expropriation. And uh, what else should we do? Um, more BEE? Like, no, I don't think that level of retardedness has anything to do with COVID. No, I think you're misunderstanding. COVID didn't, you know, what COVID did was destroy the livelihoods of millions of people. People vote according to their material conditions. COVID destroyed that. And now they're trying to regain th- that back through the 350 grants and all that sort of stuff. But what I'm saying is, under Soror Ramaphosa, the ANC has had no strategy whatsoever. 
there's a strategy just to save Cyril from himself with the Palo Palo mm-hmm. stuff, which is the major scandal. But after that, and uh, in spite of that, the ANC has done nothing to make itself. There's no smart people in it, right? There's no one in there that knows what's going on. I mean, they got Fikidin Balula, Secretary General, for God's sake. They use it, they have a step aside rule, they use it once, face by Hashidi, and that's it. Jacob Zuma is still a member of the ANC. They can't, they don't have the balls to fire. To fire. <laughs> 100 million rand fine or whatever judgment against the, the ANC. The city house was almost, uh, what you call it, attached by the share of the court. Cyril had to come in and pay 100 million rand, despite the fact that the day before, Mbalulu says this is a bullshit thing, the courts are wrong, this never happened. Like, these guys can't think about tomorrow, let alone three months in the future. So I don't think, to go back to our original statement, MK, EFF, ANC, this is not, it's not a 10-year strategy here at all. It's just what happens when there's a lack of leadership and the vacuum needs to be filled. And it's going to be filled by people who know what leadership is, like Jacob Zuma. That's all. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's really interesting, though, because obviously, you know, David Mabuza, remember the big David? He was like the worst thing that could ever happen to South Africa, and he was so scary, and, you know, him and the presidency would just, like, kill us. Uh, you remember this guy? That's now nah, nobody even remembers who he is. Anyway, this guy, as the former deputy president of the republic, he came out and said, "I find it really weird that Jacob Zuma is a member of the ANC, but is able to lead an alternative party from the ANC." So it's funny that even the old guard of the ANC are looking in, going, "Well, this is a bit weird. How come the the leader of the party doesn't do something about it?" And the answer is very clear. Because the leader of the party doesn't really give a shit about the party anymore. I I honestly think that he gave up. And let us not forget, when we say he gave up, let us not forget, he did resign. And he was convinced to stay for the good of the ANC. But arguably he didn't stay, did he? He like kind of stayed on, but he's not... He's absent. He's been absent for some time. Yeah, he's still going to find a pen. It's time in his rubble. I know th- th- this particular live stream is not terribly funny. Uh, yeah, it just happens to be that way. But um, yeah, so David Furi, thank you very much for your kind super chat. He says, uh, best outcome is an ANC minority government supported by the DA. All the DA needs to do is to get them to pass a balanced budget. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's some different variations of what could happen. Coalitions are sort of nonsense. You don't need them. You can have a memorandum of, of understanding. Like the DA could say, listen, we're going to pass your budget. We want Helen Zilla as speaker, and we want to be the head of these three portfolio committees in parliament. And in return for us, we will stop and prevent motions of no confidence in the president, uh, you know, put in by MK and the EFF. So we'll protect you in parliament. That's all you need to do. Like that could be a memorandum of understanding between the DA and the ANC as a minority government. And it could work rather well because what does the da want the da wants to have some power without any of the downsides and they can still and still want to blame the anc what does the anc want they want to partner with the da so they can blame the da when things don't work out to show that the whites are also as useless as they are so the yep. da must prevent that so the best way to prevent that is not to have a formal coalition agreement whatsoever it's just to say we have a memorandum, memorandum of understanding we'll pass the budget and the budget is reasonable Gorongwana, He's trying his best with what he's got. He's not printing money. He's not doing anything ridiculous. He's getting a bit more debt, but, you know, it's not a stupid budget. Just pass the budget. Protect me from motions of no confidence as, as you know, against uh, F- MK and EFF. And in return, the DA defends them, but also gets the speaker and the chairperson of various committees in parliament. That's it. That works very well. That could work quite well. It could work quite well, Ramon. It could work quite well. Unfortunately, it's Rita Dunstan. So we shall see. And you know what? Like, we don't want everybody to feel like it's time to slit their wrists. So, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to kind of be even slightly positive with our news when you see things like, look, the US and the US and the South African relationships, that's all in the shitter. And then you read other news about how the South African and the EU news is all in the shitter. South Africa and the EU, 
And then you constantly have Durko going back going, no, we're not. We're working with them, even though we're not. And we like Russia and China, but we don't like the US and the UK. But please give us your money. Yeah. We never, no. we never talked to the EU. They haven't spoken to the EU in a year. Mm. <laughs> a year. I think yeah, but apparently like, that's, that's, that's like still okay. They say, and mm. I quote, they say, we are in regular, regular exchange. Yeah, once a year is regular. I mean, I don't know about you, Ramon, but if you have to talk to your wife once a year, oh bless, are you regular? No, she's not here. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm, well, I'm just saying uh, uh, the, the country is the trouble. That's all. Yes, I highlight this for a reason, and that mm -hmm. is before you slit your wrist. We do talk about retail to understand, and the reason the, the news in retail to understand is very depressing. But guys, like the, the, there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Like the country does still have a serious amount of possibilities, right? I mean, it's not it's not just like the overall shithole. I mean, that's why we live here, right? But I mean, it's the news in retail to understand is just really retarded. Don't look at the headline, look at the sidebar. That's retarded. Really Name one thing that works in the sidebar there. <laughs> Who cares about some worky black American who thinks the US Treasury is bullish? They don't even know where South Africa is, these Americans. They're so dumb. They don't understand anything about this place whatsoever. Um, yeah. I don't trust the Americans at all. They they're just as bad, if not more useless than the ANC. They just don't understand liberation ideology of the ANC. The only people who do understand it is the Russians because they perfected it. And that's why they don't care about us. In case you haven't noticed, trade figures three percent of international international trade with Russia. It's a pittance. We are useful idiots for the Russians, and the Russians know it, but the ANC does not. That's yeah. the irony, isn't it? To talking of useful idiots and complete bullshit news, uh, I don't know if you've actually seen this whole thing. So since that Social Research Foundation news came out, everybody's supposedly now scared about an EFF government, and so all the news tells us that the RAND is at a degree of volatility. A mid-election jitters because you know you could have the EFF, and it's very curious that this started a couple of days ago, and they did directly correlate this news with the whole poll of you know MK's rise and what that might mean to the country. See, mm -hmm. I don't know Gee if word. you know this, Ramon, but that's not actually why. South Africa has been experiencing uh, a loss of confidence in the RAND. A lot of people go, yeah, it's because of the EFF. Um, yeah, that's not actually the reason. And in the actual course. real reason, the real, real reason, is because Zimbabwe released the, a brand new currency yesterday called the ZIG. Oh, yeah. The ZIG, yeah. And so what happened is loads of people ditched the RAND for the ZIG. And the reason that they supposedly ditched the rand for the zig is because the zig's actually backed by 2.5 tons of gold, which actually isn't a lot of money, but at least it's gold back. So yeah, what do you think of that? The zig. Well, I mean, it's probably the very based a gold backed currency. That's the first time we've seen that like in 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> based. Watch. So Bobby's yeah. going to rise up again uh, very soon. But also, I think News24 is basically paid for by Libs because it says, oh, it's the election poll that jittered the rand. Bullshit. Bullshit. And then in the very next article, which is buried, it does say, actually, it was because of the zig. See? Exactly. That's a bullshit. This, this is how the mainstream media lies about Jacob Zuma. And this is, Jacob Zuma is not our homeboy, right? We don't know the man. We never met him. We want to meet him and talk to him on, on live stream or something like that. But Jacob Zuma... He has 10% of the vote in South Africa. If you're white and you don't understand this, it's fine. But don't think we're not we're not like some York, we're not in Yorkshire, right? We're not in 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 the Czech Republic. We are in Africa. We're in the emerging market in Africa. You need to understand how Africans think. We are Africans as well. Think about how the natives think about politics and then it all makes sense why Jacob Zuma is so popular get away from corruption all that shit that doesn't mean anything in Africa TIA there's two movies you need to watch Blood Diamond and Lord of War that makes you understand Africa extremely well but back to the question Zuma we, we don't like or dislike Zuma he's an important political figure that you have to talk about and his rise 
through MK has material implications for the election and the future of this country. Some may be good, some may be bad. We don't know yet until they actually do something. But you can't just say, oh, Jacob Zuma is just so terrible and, you know, he's so corrupt and, you know, state capture. State capture was bullshit, by the way. It was it was created by the corporates and, and the corporate media to fuck him over. There was a color revolution in this place in 2017 to remove Jacob Zuma from power. Um, anyway, I think we should uh, focus on the super chats before they expire. And by the way, David, thank you so much for your very kind super chat. I actually just want to highlight that, that comment, though, mm. just quickly before I close this article. And you notice All that right. the ZIG and the Zimbabwean government highlighted uh, they're not going to do any of the one ton printing of money anymore. So actually, yeah, modern, so that basically means they're not going to adopt modern monetary theory. Very interesting. Yeah, a proper based African country. I mean, they're full of shirts, and I don't trust NPF with anything, but yeah. What a fuck. Not a fuck either. So maybe you see, send us some shekels. shekels. Oh, wait, where are we? On those shekels. Yeah, shekels. Is it a shekel? Look at us. Now we I have a the mysterious Zionist funder. That's for I sure. told you the Zionists were funding us. Look at that, 15 shekels. How much is that? I don't know, your mortgage payment probably. No, bullshit. How much, how much is a shekel? So do we reckon that the uh, the MPC and the MK can do a deal? Uh, the multi-party charter and MK could probably only do a deal if Helen brokers it. It's a yes. true story. That's literally the only person who could broker it. She's the only and one who's then the problem good. is that you have to then deal with that whole DA virtue bullshit where the DA, you know, is constantly like, oh, we're whiter than what? You know. No, the problem with the DA is that they're too democratic. So Helen can't do it by herself as the leader. Well, I mean, John's the leader, but you know, you know Helen's the leader. So if I was, if I was Helen, I would like to private plane to in Kantla, have tea with Zuma. So Jacob, we dance together. Here's the photos. We had fun together. we friends. Come on, man. All time's sake, let's make a deal. Fuck Cyril, he's a puss. Let's run KZN together. You become the premier. And we become, I don't know, whatever, finance, finance, MEC. <laughs> So you don't spend all the money <laughs> of bullshit. Match made in heaven. Then the Anglers and the Zulus will run the case in once again, just like they did 150 years ago. It's like basically history repeating itself. Well, so it could work, so cool. but it won't work because the DA are not smart enough to do it, in my personal opinion. Yeah. Right. Next one is Philip says, uh, reality, I suspect we're not going to see a fixed essay in our lives ever again. And you know what? I would dispute that because just imagine you were living in the Soviet Union in the 19, 1998. 1988, yeah. 1988, yeah. And so you know, just imagine you were sitting there and you go like, oh, it's communists. And, you know, the communists have got the, the stranglehold and we'll never see, you know, anything that symbolizes anything ever again. And Within 10 years, May communism was gone. They were a capitalist country with a brand new leader. Like, And everything looked a hell of a lot better. And if you've been around Moscow Station these days, uh, it looks a hell of a lot better like anything than anything Western Europe has to offer. So arguably, yeah. people did see it in their lifetime. So you'll be surprised. A, a lifetime is actually a very long time. In fact, if I think back to... 2018 South Africa versus 2024 South Africa. It seems like almost a different South Africa. Completely. So, you know, you'll be surprised. Like, uh, life sometimes feels like a very long thing, but it's also not as long as you think. I guess really short. I mean, just look at El Salvador. <laughs> Two years ago, most dangerous country in the world today, one of the safest countries in the world. Look mm -hmm. at Argentina. Hasn't had a balanced budget in 50 years. They balanced the budget in three months this year. This shit happens, guys. I mean, I don't know anyone in politics who's able to make it for us. I'm not going to lie. It <laughs> doesn't mean there's not someone that's going to have, you know, pop up in time to come and unite everyone. Look, I'm at actually at a stage where I just want like a colored nationalist to take over because they come from white and black ancestry. So therefore, you know, they can't be racist and, and, and all this sort of nonsense. That's what Gaten said. And I sort of do believe him in this regard. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're just on a downward decline for now in in one aspect, but in various other aspects, we're in the upward decline, right? The most off-grid country in the world. Uh, people privatizing their spaces like you can't believe. People are securing their, their, their areas like you can't believe. Massive surplus of food. 
Like, all this stuff is like really good, despite what the government has done. All the communists are gone. Praveen Gordon, gone. NDZ, gone. Naledi Pandal, gone. Ebrahim Patel, gone. It's very easy to make a deal with a corrupt idiot like Fikile Mbalula. It's not easy to make a deal with Praveen because he's an ideologue. So um, my, my trend for South Africa is hyper-privatization at a rate that you can't even believe. It's happening right before our eyes. Transnet is already talking to people. The port in Durban is already privatized or soon to be with the Philippines. All this stuff is happening right before our eyes. It, it's come to not going to exist in 10 years materially. Who cares what the state does? There's no power for them to do it, to do anything anyway. That's my view. Yeah, but I think you need to remind yourself of something. Let's say, for example, England. England in 2004 looked very different to England in 2024. England in 2004, they were writing articles about how London might be like, ooh, 20% foreigners, which means 80%, you know, native population by, you know, 2040. And yet 20 years later, the native population in London is now less than 30%, with the rest of the 70% being foreigners. Who could have predicted that in 2004? Nobody could have. Look at the, the constant invasion of the UK with foreign immigrants on a daily basis. Nobody could predict, have predicted that 20 years ago, but it's happening right now. Think of all the conflicts. Who could have ever thought in 2004 that Russia would have taken on you know, Ukraine and, and invaded yeah. Ukraine? It wasn't even a thought in somebody's mind. Who, who could have thought that we would have been locked down in our homes for a year and not allowed to leave our houses and being told to take an experimental drugs whilst wearing a face diaper? Who would have ever predicted that? So I don't know how old certain individuals are, but I mean, you're saying, well, we'll never see it in our lifetime. Like our lifetime's still got quite a long time left. And just think of everything that's happening. Like, 10 years like that's a shitload has happened just in 10 years like imagine what could happen in another 10 and then another 10 and another 10 like lifetimes are incredibly long in the world of politics like a lot happens in politics so very much. quickly all the time so much so much so just as a last thing um someone did mention elon musk we spoke about this a little bit on the last um uh, live stream, but Elon Musk is taking on the Brazilian deep state, and it's yeah. utterly it's unbelievable. Argentina, it's Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. It's the Brazilian deep state. It's utterly unbelievable because it's the first time that an individual is basically taking down a judge in another country of which he is not a citizen or resident, a judge who overtly flouts the constitution at all costs for the benefit of the political class. And he's doing it outside the borders and territory and remit of the powers of this particular judge. And he's doing it because the constitution says what this judge is asking for is illegal. So fuck mm. you. Huge. Like mass, like mass, this has never happened in history before. Where you got someone with fuck your money, he's literally telling an entire deep state to go fuck themselves. Mm. And Elon Musk is not one to lose. Right? Yeah. At all. He's taking on the entire deep state of a country. Imagine he sets his eyes on South Africa <laughs> like next week. He's like, yeah. It, may, it so, may very well happen. I mean, uh, if, if like there is an ANC EFF coalition, it may very well be that Elon does put his eyes on South Africa because he has not made the fact that he really dislikes Julius very well known. So, it's, yeah, it very well could be. Genocide. Yeah, but Elon Musk is like, he's like really. I always rated him as like a business person, but like as a as a, a leader of of culture and as someone who is backing what he believes in, like he's really up there with like the best of them in history. Really, I think he's going to be a a, a, a sort of century defining person. Yeah, and right. he's on our side. So I think the last thing that we can we can end off with, Ramon just for shits and giggles, is uh, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, the new trailer for the new Joker movie dropped, mate. Check it out. Uh, actually doing a sequel to Joaquin Phoenix's uh, Joker movie. Okay. And uh, it's he's been locked up in Arkham, and it appears that they're going to give him a strong female character as a lead. 
who happens to be, uh, I think what they're probably going to do is well, probably Harley Quinn or something like that. And it appears that they're casting um, Lady Gaga in another one of her roles. What's your view of that? I don't even give a shit about pop culture, <laughs> like at all. I'm still finishing Shogun. Well, I'm finishing is a strong word. I've only watched two. So I'm watching good stuff. I'll watch this when it comes out. I used to go to movies all the time since having children, especially since COVID. And the problem is, right, there's a, there's a cultural problem in South Africa. It's not racist, it's a cultural problem. In that, Stir Kini Call took away the popcorn buckets and now they give you a, a, a bag of popcorn in a bag. So when you move the bag, it makes a fuck lot of noise, which is really annoying. On top of that, you get youths with with iPhone 16 pluses doing voice calls and music and TikTok in the cinema. Like back in my day, you could shoot these people in the head because like it's a crime against the good order of man to do this sort of things in the cinema. But so that is illegal. So yeah, I just don't go to cinema anymore for those reasons. I think it's become very difficult to justify going to see anything now in any form of cinematic portrayal because everything is just laced with identity politics, though, isn't it? It's like, yeah, go look at anything on Netflix. It's like you can see that in the casting criteria, they've been like, right, we need one gay, we need one lesbian, we need one black, there needs to be an interracial couple, there needs to be two one white guy, one black guy, one black girl, one bisexual, something or other. And it's like They've done all this even before you get to the story. And it's like, well, the story's clearly not going to be interesting now, is it? Because no one has that group of friends. Like, literally no one has that group of friends. No, another problem so, that you have, another problem that you have is, like, you live in PE, so cinemas, like, don't exist. Of course we have cinemas, mate. Don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so I, they, think, I, think that's, I think that's the biggest difficulty. It's like, do you actually look at a story anymore? When was the last time you watched a film and you thought, it's actually a really good story. The like last now it's all just like everybody just smacks you in the face with identity politics and, you know, you need to try better and you need to be more or less racist. And, oh, oh you know, it's all about the men, the men repressing the women. Like, oh, fuck off. The last duel was the last great movie with the story that I watched. You got Mission Impossible, which is pretty good and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. There we go. The cinema in PE, that one dude with a projector and a white sheet in the backyard. That's correct. <laughs> and then he charges 10 rand. That's incorrect. We have a stir <laughs> chemical here. It's very good. It's in Bay West. And we also have a new metro here. It's very good. It's in Boardwalk. That's it. That's, yeah. that's the two we have. We don't have any more than that. I'm, I'm out. Very good. That's called competition right there. Yep. There you go. They both say the same shit and both charge you exorbitant prices. I think that's actually probably another reason for the death of cinemas. Like the prices are a little bit horrendous. Huh? Uh yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't watch. But anyway. Thank you for watching, everyone. By the way, next week I'm in a place with little to practically no signal whatsoever. So you probably won't have live streams next week, but it will be back uh on the last in the last week of April. So yeah, don't shout if you don't see us next week. I actually just want to address one more chat before we go. And that is mm -hmm. uh, this one. Starlink. So I've actually got Starlink in the house. I mean, a smart link, spot link, uh, whatever we're calling it. That's anyway, I, I have some kind of link connection. May or may not be linked to a star. Ah, I don't know. Anyway, let's give you actually some, some feedback on it. It's very temperamental. So it's like it needs to have an actual view of the sky at all times because it's got a link to a satellite. The satellite connection isn't isn't great. Like it does come in and out of it. So it's not ideal if you're streaming something, then it's like 100 megs and then it's just like nothing because a cloud went past. You can't put it in your house, got to be outside. The actual internet connection is stupidly expensive uh, you're probably better off with fiber in many instances but you know it's very novel the the actual router on it is very advanced so it, it feels very much like for those of you who are techies it feels very much like a micro tech router where you can literally control every device in the house 
So if you've got like kids, you can pause their internet and you can be like, no more internet for you, go to bed. And, you know, you can control their bandwidth and their speeds and you could do some very funky things on it. And it's, it's a very novel piece of equipment, but it's nowhere near the, the answer that that's, uh, I suppose many of us thought it might be. Yeah, but you also live in PE. There's no real satellites there. Ha, 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 ha. Satellites all over the sky, mate. Yeah. We're all that under the same sky. Lion King taught me that. Don't break the law, kids. It's not worth it. And it's very expensive. But it looks like things. That's what you get for breaking the law, Byron. Who See, said I've got like smart link? So if there was if, if there was a BE is. partner, it would be like double the speed now and so much more efficient and cheaper. That's why they don't allow it in the country. They want it for the people. For our people. Anyway, you know, talking shit. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a lovely evening. Yep. Thanks, everyone. And, uh, Thanks very stay much retarded. for listening to retarded nonsense and retard understand. Thank you for Pope. Retard mm -hmm. Retardation isn't forever. Just ask Ramon. True. Look at that haircut. For those of you who haven't I, noticed, Ramon got the world's most retarded haircut. But eh. Mark, what are you talking about? This is fresh. Fresh. Or, what, do they, what, do the youth, what do the youth say? On point. There you go. On point. For those of you who, who will please, please, please do me a favor. Go in the comment section and tell Ramon how retarded that haircut is. It just looks retarded. What do you think you are, mate? 20? Anyway, enough of retarded news. Bye. Bye.